Glory to God for all he did last night. Amen. If you, let's testify right now. If you received healing or deliverance or a miracle or a touch from God last night, just give God a praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's a lot of miracles. Thank you, Jesus. He is so faithful. Revival is truly now. It's so exciting to think that Jesus is here right now. Can you renew your mind to that truth that he is here? He's not far away in heaven, but he's here right now. And he has brought you here to have an encounter with you today. You didn't come here on your own accord. He brought, led you, brought you here because he loves you so much. And he wants to deliver you, heal you, equip you and release his anointing to you, more of his spirit to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so expectant and excited for all that God is going to do today at this conference, all the miracles he has in store. More. There's more. More in store. Glory to glory today. Hallelujah. Well, I was sharing last night that it is God's will for you to all walk in his power. This is what he's doing now. This is a serious word. Like he is ready. He is ready to move through you. There are too many people oppressed. There are too many people who are lukewarm just because they don't know his love because they never encountered him in power. And so he is ready to move in power through you because he moves through his people, through his vessels. That's how he chooses to do it. Amen. So today... I'm going to equip you of how to walk in the anointing, how to see demons leave people, demonic bondages, sicknesses leave people. Amen. Hallelujah. So to walk in the anointing is, is something spiritual, not physical. It's not like there's a checklist and a ritual or something you just like go to school for, but you need your spiritual eyes to open up. You need to understand in the spiritual realm what is going on, how the devil and his demons operate, and really what makes them go, what makes them leave people. So this is what I'm gonna teach you today. What makes demons go? What makes them obey? Number one is that they see that you have authority over them. Anointing and authority, that's two in one. When God releases the anointing, it also carries authority. So it's like the authority is the is the power over the demons. They see, I have to obey. And then the anointing is the power. It's the power that makes them go. It's the power that threatens them. Like, ah, like fire coming upon them. Amen. So first of all, they have to see that you actually carry this authority. Uh, now, what so many believers don't know is that you have been given authority over the devil. Every believer, the moment one gives their life to Jesus, they have been given authority. The moment one gives their life to Jesus, they receive an inheritance from Christ. An inheritance of abundant life in every area that includes healing. By his stripes we are healed. Healing becomes your inheritance. Deliverance becomes your inheritance. And also what's a part of this inheritance is authority over the devil. Jesus returned the keys to us that the devil stole. Adam and Eve, they had, they had authority. God said, let them have dominion. They had authority. This was God's original creation, plan, intention, design. But Eve chose to hand the keys, hand her authority to the devil. 
We have free will with what we do with our authority. And it is true to this day, you can still be handing your authority over to the devil. So then he actually has authority over you. You're like giving up what God has given you. So every single believer has authority over the devil. Day one of being a believer, becoming a believer. Every believer has authority over the devil in their own spiritual life. There's different levels of authority. Different levels of authority, just like how we understand authority in the world. So many things in the world comes from God, like kingdom. We're in a kingdom of God, and there's kingdoms on this earth. That's not just something made up on this earth. That came from God, that idea. Kingdoms, governments, right? So, so when you have the authority of Christ, when you become a believer, you have authority over your own spiritual life, but you don't automatically have authority over all demons. Now, that's not shocking to, to realize because so few people are casting out demons today. Demons are so prevalent, but they're hiding because authority is not present so much in the church and in believers. So Jesus, he says to the disciples when they return from casting out demons for the first time, these disciples that had been with Jesus had been receiving impartation of anointing and equipping to walk in the anointing. These disciples who had proven themselves trustworthy These disciples who had stayed with Jesus for a while, it wasn't just day one. They were now casting out demons when he sent them out. And they came back and they were rejoicing and they were were saying, Jesus, the demons obeyed us. And he says, he says, Luke 10, 19, I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions, and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will in any way harm you. So Jesus actually says this to the disciples, not on day one that he called them, but after they had been with Jesus for a while, And it was now time to release this higher level authority to them. So those who are casting out demons today, they have been given the same thing that those disciples have been given. A higher level of authority over demons. So believers are given authority over their own spiritual life at first. But authority over other people? God just can't give that to anybody. You have to be trustworthy with that power, with that authority. You know, people in this world that have authority and they abuse that authority and power and they harm people, it can be the same way in the spiritual realm. So that's why I say demons have to see that you actually have authority over them. We see this example in the Bible, Acts 19.13, some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exor- exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? So this reveals that demons can see if one actually has authority over them in the spiritual realm. So how do we get there? Well, like how do we get to that place of having that authority? So number one, it's what I shared so much last night. You have to actually make sure you carry the anointing. You have to be serious about being an anointed vessel and and, and, surrendering to God and humbling yourself. What what Jesus also said when those disciples came back from casting out demons for the first time is he says, I praise you, Father, 
Thank you, Father, thank you for, you are Lord. This is Passion Translation, Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. And you have hidden the great revelation of your authority from those who are proud and wise in their own eyes. Instead, you have shared it with these who humble themselves. Yes, Father, your plan delights your heart as you've chosen this way to extend your kingdom by giving it to those who have become like trusting children. So this is what he says after these disciples first were casting out demons. He's praising the Father and saying, you've hidden the great revelation of your authority from those who are proud. This is one of the biggest secrets of how to receive the anointing. You have to be humble and childlike, or else no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you try casting out demons, they won't go because the anointing will not be given to you by God. God will hide it, actually. So you must become like a child. You must become teachable. You must shed your old wineskin. It's so rare to see the anointing move today and demons be cast out. And that right there shows us that there is a lot missing in the church today. Not just the anointing, but revelation. Mysteries, the deeper things in the spirit. Revelation of how to access the anointing and the revelation of this authority. Revelation of how to walk in the anointing, walk in the authority. That's been missing It's been missing. We need keys and revelations from God. We need him to breathe upon scripture to to really understand the kingdom. Amen. And so when we see in the church today that people are staying bound, the power of God's not there. We know that we are missing something. We know that we need new solutions. There's not solutions right now. People are staying stuck. So that should humble the whole body of Christ. That should humble all of us to realize that these disciples in the Acts church had revelation that most in the body of Christ don't have today. And this revelation God wants us to have, we need to have this in our own spiritual lives, in the church today. So this should humble the whole body of Christ to see There's revelation we're missing. The way that this comes is by humbling myself, is becoming like a child, not a know-it-all. doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian, how much Bible school you've had, how long you've been teaching. If if you are not operating like we see in the Acts Church, the ministers, the apostles, if you're not seeing that in your church today, there's some humbling that needs to take place. There's some revelation that needs to be found. Amen. So to be humble, teachable, childlike, surrendering everything to God, not being about your own ambitions and your your ministry, these are the keys of having a trustworthy heart that God can entrust with anointing. And as I shared last night, part two to this is you then need to follow God's principles of receiving his anointing, which you, for the most part, is by impartation. You need to position yourself where the power of God is moving so that oil can come upon your life, not doing things your own way, only just crying out in your room, but positioning yourself to receive, following God's principles. Okay, so as you, as you do those things, it's not hard, it's not complicated. If you can really have a heart after God's, and you can follow his principles, you will receive this anointing. I've seen it come so easily. I mean, with ease in in my church, and when I minister at different events, these testimonies. I've seen this one pastor, uh, her name's Pastor Heather, and she pastors a church, she's in her early 60s, and she pastors a church an hour-ish, an hour and a half away from LA, and she was, she's been pastoring for a long time with her husband, and she's been a a Christian for like 40-something years, and she's taught in Bible school, but they did not see the power of God move in their church, and she longed for that because she hated to see people stuck in bondage for so long in her church, 
and not be able to help them. So she was praying, she was crying out to God, and she happened to see a video when that revival started to break out in the park at Fivefold Church where I passed her. And she was like, this is what I was looking for, what I was praying for. So she drove after her church service. And um, just a few weeks later, she just came hungry saying, I want this anointing because I want to see the people in my church set free like I'm seeing here at your church. And, and so I released the anointing upon her and she fell back with the power of God and received the anointing. And just a few days, uh, I think it was a few days later, her, the next service they had, demons manifested in her church service for the first time, and they were cast out. The anointing immediately started flowing through her. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there was a evangelist to the same story. He hadn't seen the power of God move in his ministry, and he longed for this, and he had a pure heart. And he came to a Revival Is Now event that I was ministering at in D.C. at the National Mall. And um, he just came with expectancy and hunger to receive the anointing. And at the end of the service, I just declared over everyone, I, I released the anointing upon everyone. I declared that this anointing would flow through you and demons would, would go as you commanded them and the sick would be healed as I will do today. It's time to receive impartation today. Amen? But I declared this over everyone, and he just had his hands up. I didn't touch him. I didn't pray for him one-on-one. -on -one. And he had his church service a couple days later, and demons trembled and were cast out as he walked in authority. Quickly like that. Hallelujah. And for both of these ministers, the anointings continue to flow in their ministries. So this impartation is real, and this, this is what I mean by God means serious business. He's not making it difficult to receive his anointing. You just need to humble yourself, surrender, position yourself, follow his principles, and bam, that's it. He's going to pour that anointing in your life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So... Then when the anointing comes, the authority comes, the demons see that you actually have authority over them. So this is what's important, to make sure you're receiving the anointing. But, no, but number two, you need to not skip the first step of walking in authority in your own personal spiritual life. You can't be hungry to cast demons out of other people but you're letting the devil walk all over you in your own life. Man, so many believers do not know the authority that they have. The authority you have is so powerful. Even before you receive anointing to cast out demons, the authority you have is so powerful. The devil's under your foot. And as you keep doors shut to the devil, even before the anointing comes in your life, when you keep doors shut to the devil, you can be walking in victory every day. Like, the devil really never has to win. God will use everything for your good. Attacks may come, weapons formed against you, but they won't prosper. But the way they won't prosper is when you actually walk in your authority. It's not like you just go about your life however, weapons formed against you, oh, they won't prosper, and you live how you want. God's going to just stop them. That's not how it works. You walking in your authority is what makes them not prosper. You submit to God. You resist the devil. You resist those weapons formed against you. And they must flee. The devil must flee. The, the Bible says submit to God, resist the devil, and he must flee. The weapons that he's forming against you have to stop and go back from where, to where they came from. When you walk in your authority. So walking in authority looks like this. You need to know what your inheritance is. As I shared, your inheritance is abundant life in every area. Abundant life in your health, in the area of freedom. Abundant life in your marriage, in your relationships, in your family. Abundant life in your finances. 
abundant life in your ministry, abundant life in your business, favor upon you everywhere you go. Abundant life, that's your inheritance. And so whenever the devil is threatening this inheritance that is yours, you need to stop him in his tracks. You have been given the authority. You need to step up in warrior mode and say, no, you cannot steal my health. This is my inheritance that was given to me. You don't have authority to steal my health, to steal my peace, to steal my finances, to steal my family, my husband, my wife. You do not have the authority. I reject your lies. I reject these attacks. And I declare my inheritance from Jesus over my life. I declare by his stripes I am healed. I declare I have abundant health. I declare that Jesus has given me perfect peace, not a spirit of fear, but perfect peace, a sound mind. This peace will never leave me, it is mine. And so we're in a spiritual war and the way this war works many times, most of the time is in the mind is lies that the devil brings. He's the father of lies, lies that he brings. You have to be constantly rejecting these lies. That's how you walk in your authority. You should be walking in your authority every single day. Every time a lie is coming from the devil, use your authority. Speak aloud. The, the power of life and death is in your tongue. This is, this is the main way we walk in authority. Jesus demonstrated this to us when he came on this earth. And in the, in the Gospels, we see whenever he's walking in his authority, he's, he's speaking usually. He's commanding demons to go. He's speaking aloud. He's declaring healing to people. He's saying, get up. He's speaking these things, and then they're happening. And then he said to the disciples, when you speak to this mountain and you believe that what you say will happen, it will then move. So this is him teaching them about their authority and how to execute it. He didn't say, when you pray to me that I will move the mountain, then I will move it. He says, when you speak to the mountain and you believe the power of your words, the authority that you have, then it will move. <laughs> Hallelujah. So by speaking, by speaking aloud this rejection, resisting, rejecting, renouncing the devil's lies and his attacks, that's how you walk in authority. If you've never done this before and you start doing this now, you will see such a difference in your life. You will be shocked. You'll be like, what? I've had this power. I've had this authority all this time. I could, be, I could have been walking in victory and abundant life every day. Yes, church, body of Christ. This is what you have. Wake up. It's powerful what you have. The devil is under our feet. There is so much power in your words. When I grabbed revelation for this for the first time, when my spiritual eyes opened up to this, whoo, I became very quiet. I be, meaning I became very careful over my words. I wouldn't just jabber, just talk to talk. I realized, whoa, I gotta be careful. I gotta be intentional with every word I speak because there's so much power in my words. I took it so seriously. Even a cold coming on, I say, I reject sickness. I reject uh, this cold, it has to go, I am healed. Even little things. Taking it so seriously, my authority, my words. And so when God sees this, this is part of him seeing that he can trust you. He, he needs to see that you have this revelation of the power he's given you, the little power that's actually super big. The, the first power, the first authority he gives is, is massive. He needs to see that you're, you're intentional and careful with your words, that you're speaking life, never death, over yourself and other people. And so when he sees that, he sees, wow, they really love me. As the Bible says, if you love me, you'll follow my commands. Oh, and they're taking my words seriously. They're renewing their mind to this revelation I've given them. 
and they, they have this heart that they want to receive and not disvalue this precious inheritance I've given them. And, and they, they also love their neighbors so much that they never want to speak a word of death over them that could become a curse unintentionally even. Oh, but they really love, I see, I see their love through their actions. So I can entrust them with more now. Because the more anointing and authority you receive, the more powerful you become in the spiritual realm. So even speaking words of death carries more power. So this is serious. And at the same time, um, so at the same time, the, 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 the devil also respects you more when he sees that you know that you have authority and you know your authority. That's number two. What makes demons to go, number one, is that they see that you carry authority over them. Number two is that they see that you know your authority. And so even before anointing is released upon your life, the devil sees, demons see, that you know your authority. And even their respect grows. And so then when, when this anointing comes upon you, demons are going to start to fear you and tremble and manifest, be scared. Um, but at the same time, they're like fighting for their life. They're desperate to stay in that person, that vessel before you. And they come from the father of lies, the devil. So when you carry anointing and demons start to manifest, it looks different. Sometimes, sometimes it just looks like crying. It's actually not even the person crying, but the demons crying. So upset that they're being sent out of this vessel. Sometimes it looks like screaming. The demons are horrified that they're leaving and the devil will be mad at them and they're going to the pit many times and it's not good for them. Sometimes it's a scream and the, the power of God is like fire. It's, it's, it's scary for them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Amen. So, so it'll be like that sometimes. Sometimes there's no manifestation. But then other times, the demons will try to fight. They fight by lying. What they're trying to do is trick you to make you think that you don't have authority over them. Just like it's the same scheme of the devil in the garden uh, with Eve, you know, tricking her. Give me the authority you have. And she could have just been, no, I'm keeping my authority. I have authority over you. So it's the same scheme that the demons do today. Uh, they try to, to trick you and, 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 and they'll, they'll lie. They'll lie through words. They'll lie through like intimidation. They'll lie and say stuff like, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Like in a scary voice to try to intimidate you. They're liars. I won't leave this person. Yes, you will. You're just lying. You're trying to trick me. Mm -mm. I know my authority. And I've had sometimes, like, um, I've had a couple times, a few times, a handful of times, uh, demons and gentlemen and men that were tall and large and, and they, the demons possess them in the moment where the anointing is there. And they come trying to be all scary, intimidating. I won't leave him. You can't make me, you know, uh, with the, just a scary looking face, you know, and voice, intimidating. And all these times that, that that's happened, I, by the grace of God, renewed my mind in that moment, they're lying. This is their trick. This is their scheme from their father of lies. I know my authority. I know God's given me authority. I know God's called me to this. I, I know I have authority over them. They're just lying. 
So I'm going to stand firm in my authority in Christ, and I'm going to simply walk in this authority, execute this authority that God says he's given to me, and I'm going to command them to go. And, and every time they go, they go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the, 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 the more you walk in your authority and the more you really have revelation of this authority, the more the demons obey. Because we have, a, by the way, we have authority over demons, so it's the principle of authority in the world. Like the more one really knows their authority, the more people respect that authority and actually follow the authority instead of rebel. So it's the same way in the spiritual realm. So the more that you are walking in this authority and you, you don't let them trick you, literally like all the demons, they're growing in respect and they're leaving quicker. They're leaving quicker because the authority in you has grown. The respect has grown in the demons and they obey. They obey quicker. Hallelujah. Um, and so the third thing that makes demons go is when they see that you execute the authority properly. When they see that you execute your authority properly. So in other words, that you understand how it works. You understand really what makes them go. You understand how the spiritual realm works. You understand authority. What I mean by this is um, one example of authority that we know, that we understand, is a teacher in a classroom. A teacher that knows his or her authority will not let kids, the, ki the students, mess around. The little, the young kids, let's say, for example, mess around. And, 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 and so, you know, how they exercise discipline or whatever to the children that makes them, the children respect that authority and not mess around. And so eventually, these children that are maybe just such troublemakers and loud and disruptive usually, maybe to other people, but when this specific teacher that they respect, that really knows their authority and knows how to execute their authority properly, when they step in that room, the classroom, the kids just become quiet. The teacher doesn't even have to say anything. Uh, so many times, people don't know how to execute their authority the proper way. They forget how authority works. Like, they, they, they instead focus on screaming loud and putting hands and using all these other things other than authority. But when one, really has a, when one really has authority, they can whisper a command and the, the people, they have to obey. They have to respect that. We can have, you know, an older person as president, right? And they can not say with a very strong voice, but say, this is the law now. We have to obey. <laughs> you know, whether it's someone with a loud, strong voice or someone with a softer voice, it's the same law that we have to follow because of the authority that they are in, the, the position they are in. And at the same time, when, when the president, for example, issues that one command, all, that one command is all that's needed for that law to go in place, for people to obey that law. Like, here's an example. You know, I don't know who the one was to say that we had to all wear masks. I forget. But, um, like, let's pretend, like, let's say the president is like, okay, now everyone has to wear masks when you're inside or something back in the COVID times. And so just one command was enough for everyone to, to obey. I'm just giving an example, of course, I know. 
People can do what they want to. But you know what I'm trying to say. Amen? Um, but they, we didn't, they didn't need to send, like, uh, a person, a representative of the president to every single person's door and knock on their house and repeat the command that was already issued. Right? Just that one person in that place of authority said one thing, one time, it could be even a whisper, and everyone had to obey. That's authority. That's the principle of authority. And it's the same principle in the spiritual realm. So it is not a loud voice that makes demons go. It is not physical objects put in, putting upon the demons, the person and the demons, that makes the demons go. It is also not collective prayer. Many people saying, get out over one person that makes the demons go. We never see the disciples doing that. We never see Jesus doing that. No, it is one's authority in Christ that makes demons go. That's, and we see this example with Apostle Peter. It says in Acts 5.14, People brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds, also, crowds gathered also from the towns of, around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits. And all of them were healed. So this is specifically talking about Peter. So this is that Peter was ministering. Peter was ministering here. One person Walking in authority. That was who, who God had given the authority of Christ on that day at that service. And so how it works in the spiritual realm is that everyone who comes they're into that service, into that church service, they are submitting their whole selves to the authority of Christ there. So the authority of Christ that Peter's walking in, they are submitting themselves by, by coming and positioning themselves. That's the action of submitting themselves, submitting all, all of their spiritual life, so including the demons. So, 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 so it's, it, God's, God's will is for demons to go, sickness to go, the Holy Spirit to come, peace, joy, and abundant life to be released, the love of God to be released to God's people. So as a true anointed vessel is walking in their authority in Christ, all of that takes place. So, they, so everyone comes and all demons, all demonic sicknesses, all things of the kingdom of darkness, they have to obey that authority of Christ that was in Peter. They know that. Just like when you are an American citizen, you, you, you know you have to obey the laws of the American government. The president says, this is the law, for example. We all, we all know we have to obey that. People in uh, England don't have to, but we know we have to. So demons, when they come, position, uh, when they come in the, uh, where the authority of Christ is being executed, they have no choice but to go. That's what makes them go. So that's why Peter, when he, when he is just walking by sometimes you don't even have to speak like that example I gave of the teacher that walks in the classroom and everyone is just quiet sometimes you don't even have to speak this shadow was enough the authority of Christ was in him so strong he knew his authority the demons saw that they were terrified they already knew okay I'm going <laughs> I have no choice whether it's before Peter speaks a word or after I have to go I know the authority that he carries and I'm telling you, remember I said how the more demons see that you understand how things operate in the spiritual realm and you know your authority and you know how to walk in your authority, you know the proper way to execute authority, that's what makes them go. And so when you're doing things in a carnal way, a non-spiritual way, you are, you are not walking in this authority, but you're using these other techniques that don't have anything to do with authority. You're doing the popular thing that you're seeing other people do, other ministers do. You're doing the old wineskin thing that's not working very well. You're doing that thing, guess what? They don't respect, they don't obey. They found a loophole. And so walking 
in your authority, executing your authority properly is so important. You can't do it any old way. Oh, I received impartation. Oh, I can just do it however I want now. No. You got to receive anointing and you also need to have the respect of demons. They need to, they need to obey you. So you have to do things God's way for that to take place. You have to execute your authority properly for that to take place. It's, it's important. It's not like, oh, I can just do whatever. No. We got to do things God's way if we want to see many, many people set free. Not just one, two, three, but many people. I'm telling you, there's no need to be struggling with demons for several hours. There's no need for many people to be stuck with their demons still. We have to do things God's way. We have to humble ourselves, receive this new wine, receive this new revelation from God that's actually in the word we've just been missing. That's in the word through Apostle Peter, through Apostle Paul. We just got to do that. We just got to apply those principles, do things God's way. And you'll be way more effective. This is one of the secrets of why all were healed. With, with Peter, it says all were healed. Because he really knew his authority and he was executing his authority properly. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, lastly, executing the authority properly. Um, some, another thing that I mean by this is um, recognizing that we are in a kingdom of God. A kingdom government uh, the governments on this earth, whether it's a kingdom, whether it's a like democracy, we can all kind of call them kingdoms, right? Amen. But the way, the way they work, the way they function is the government, the kingdom has certain ideals and certain visions. And then they, there are people that are put into authority who will help bring this vision and ideal forth. Amen? That's, that's how it works, right? And so, like, in America, we have elected officials. We have people in government. We have president. We have vice president. We have governors. We have mayors. We have policemen. We also have judges. And all of those people are walking in authority. Even, actually, teachers are in places of authority, and actually, everyone's in a place of authority. All parents are in authority over their children. And so we're, we all have this place in society of executing authority to help bring forth the ideal and vision of that government or kingdom. Like in America, it's, it's freedom and uh, the pursuit of happiness. Amen. And, you know, the... the the ability for anyone to, to pursue their dream and go, go far, you know? That, that's like the ideals, and most people in America, for example, agree with those ideals. And so they're even, you know, executing their authority, whether it's parents or it's teachers or it's in government, to united to see this ideal and vision go forth. But we all have different levels of authority in society. Amen. They're all not the same, but they're all very important. They're all really needed. I mean, even the lower level authorities of parents, what if they were not walking in their authority over their children? What if every child didn't have any authority over them? Imagine how the whole country would look like, right? So they're all really important. Well, it's the same in the kingdom of God. God's kingdom, he is the king of this kingdom. Jesus is the king, and he has these ideals and visions. And that's to destroy the kingdom of darkness, to advance the kingdom of God, for God's power and love to come through vessels and open up eyes to his love and bring people into salvation and relationship with him and destroy the works of the devil over people's lives, cast out demons, heal the sick, release his spirit, release his anointing, abundant life upon people. That's God's vision ideal. And, and so what God does is he places his believers, his children, in different places of authority. 
It's a kingdom government we're in. We're not just Christians. We're, in, we're, we're citizens of the kingdom of God. Kingdom. We're in a kingdom. So there's different levels of authority, but we're all so important. And so like we see with Paul in Acts 19.11, it says that God was doing extraordinary miracles to the hands of Apostle Paul where even they would bring handkerchief and aprons to his skin and bring him on the sick and demon oppressed and they'd be free and healed immediately. So, and then we see with Peter, we see Peter, this powerful shadow of the anointing, all were being healed. We can see in these examples, we can see through the word extraordinary that they were carrying extraordinary level of authority. Extraordinary, a higher level of authority where even principalities had to obey. But we don't, and not every single person has that calling from God, has been given that position of authority to deal with principalities. But we all have different levels of authority. And so how it works is we're all supposed to be walking in our own dominion that God has given us. And so when we're all walking in our own dominion, the devil's kingdom is being destroyed Every day, all day, and God's kingdom is advancing all day, every day. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but what's important to realize is that we have to remember that we are in this kingdom and we need to work together. We need to be united. We need to recognize this way of God because many times we're just so personally focused I want to cast out demons is what we want instead of, I want to see this person free. We need to shift this mindset. I want the anointing to cast out demons. No, it should be, I want to see this person free. Whether God uses me to cast the demons out of this person or somebody else in the kingdom of God. And so sometimes, like, you can be walking in your own dominion, which your own dominion looks like... If you're a minister, if you're a, if you're a leader of a church, that's your dominion. If you are um, speaking at a, a church, like how I am right now, right, right in this moment, in this session of this morning, I have the authority of Christ right now in this place. But then in the next section, I will not have the authority of Christ. And it, I, ha I have to catch a plane after this, but I wish I could stay. But if I could stay and I was sitting here, I would not have the authority of Christ but Prophet Charlie would, and Pastor Brian, and Pastor Darren, whoever's ministering, would. And so I could be sitting there, and you could be coming asking me for prayer. I say, no, I don't have authority of Christ right now. Who's the Peter right now? I'm not the Peter right now. I would be operating outside of God's authority. And what many people don't realize is that's when demons mess around. That's when, that's when demons mess around. That's when they hide. That's when demons start to become weird and people can even get hurt sometimes. You know, like as I minister, I've never seen, the only time I've seen like demon, like people have to really hold back people or even a demon make someone hit their head or something like that on a chair or something, is when there's been this kind of disorder. When people, you know, didn't have revelation or weren't respecting this order. And they're executing their authority outside of their dominion. Hallelujah. So, so, a, 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 an average believer, like every, every other believer who's not like a, a, anointed to be a fivefold minister, for example, your dominion is your family, your children. You have dominion there. So when there is a demonic oppression in your child, cast the demon out, walk in your authority. When you are in the workplace and, um, you know, you're, you're loving someone with the love of God and, and they are drawn to the light of Jesus in you and they start opening up and you start sharing your testimony and they start opening up and say, saying that they have anxiety, they have depression, they have suicidal thoughts and you share with them. Jesus can free you. He did it for me. I've seen him do it for so many people. He can free you even right now. Do you want to receive freedom from Jesus? And they say yes. Then you, that, this is your dominion now. 
not forcing it because God doesn't force himself. That's another dangerous place you can be in the spiritual realm. But when they are open, that's when, that's when it has become your dominion in the workplace or wherever you are in life, in the, the salon, whoever you're talking with, and they start to open up and there's this, they, they want prayer, they want freedom, this is your dominion. But at the same time, you still need to have this heart, I want to see this person free rather than I want to cast demons out of them. Because, because maybe they have principalities. And maybe you, don't have, maybe you don't have yet that anointing to deal with the principalities, or maybe that's just not your calling. And so you need to have this heart, I want to see them free. So I'm not just going to cast demons out of them and leave them, but I'm going to pray for them. Maybe some demons will go if they have principalities. Maybe some are still there. I'm going to tell them about the kingdom of God. I'm going to invite them to church. I'm going to invite them to Apostle Peter today. Let's get, let's get you under the shadow of Apostle Peter's of today. That's how to be kingdom-minded. That's how to have a heart for people to be free. And you explain to them, you, you need to get where there's a high-level anointing to free you. And also, this should be told to everyone you minister to. Because everyone needs to be equipped in the church. They need equipping. They need to be equipped of how to maintain their freedom too. And they need to receive impartation of anointing in their own life. Amen. So that's, uh, that's how we can really see every person be set free. Is when you walk in your authority accurately. And you also have just this heart to see people free, where you understand that we are in a kingdom government. And you lead them, you invite them to get under high-level anointing. To receive complete freedom and to be equipped and to receive impartation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it is time to receive this anointing, this authority. It is time. Revival is now. It is time to be be victorious over the devil in your own life and in other people that God leads you to, to walk in dominion. It's time now. Hallelujah. Amen. You can stand to your feet right now. God has brought you here today, this morning, to receive this anointing in your life. To receive this anointing, to break strongholds, to set you free if that's what you need, if some of you need that, to release healing for those of you that need healing. And he's also brought you here to receive impartation of anointing. It's time to walk in his power, all of you who are surrendered. It is time right now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God right now is going to start off by breaking off these yokes off of every person here right now who needs freedom. And so close your eyes. Put your eyes to Jesus. He is the one who does every miracle. Every miracle that happens today is going to be done by Jesus alone. It is him you've come to see. So look to Jesus right now. Surrender to him. Invite him to come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If there's anyone here who feels demonic manifestation, you can come forward. If there's anyone here who knows they need freedom, you can come forward right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I break every curse sent upon your life now, and I declare every last spirit of infirmity, every 
impure sexual spirit, every spirit of death must go from you completely in Jesus' name. I speak complete healing to your body now. Complete healing in every area. No more sickness in this body. From today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I'm you, hun. You, hun, right here. Can you come up here, hun? Thank you, Jesus. God is freeing you right now, hon. Thank you, Lord. Is there anything you wanted to renounce? I want to renounce the pain in the back, the pain in the legs, the knees, spinal cord, uh, disc, the, my, the disc that has been re, uh, out of place in my back, sciatica, the knees, um, pain in the knee, uh, arthritis. And God is healing you and freeing you right now. I detach you from all of this, all of this pain. I break every curse sent upon your life that you would have this sickness and pain. And I declare every spirit of infirmity must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be free now. Free from all the sickness now. And I declare complete healing in your body in Jesus' name. Be healed completely. No more pain. Receive this anointing. Abundant health, I declare. Peace and joy in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for freeing your people. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You here, hon? Yeah. Hallelujah. God is freeing you right now. Did you want to renounce anything? Jesus, I detach you from that now, and I break every word curse spoken over you from other people speaking against you, and I declare every spirit of condemnation, every spirit of religion, every spirit of self-loathing, hatred must go from you completely now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Be free completely now. In Jesus' name, may you see yourself as God sees you. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit, his anointing upon you. Receive his love. May your eyes open up now. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. Praise you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You here, hon. You right here. You here? Can you come here? God is freeing you and healing you now. Did you want to renounce anything? Yes, I'm generational curse in my family. Both my dad and my mom, witchcraft curses. When I'm here for my family, for my husband, he's been suffering for his sickness for over 10 years, but I believe that he can get healed with the blood of Jesus. And my family, all sickness, um, diabetic, kidney problems, cancer, uh, high blood pressure, generational curse, and uh, religion. Amen. 
I detach you from all of that now. I break every generational curse off of you in Jesus' name. I break every curse of witchcraft off of you. I declare every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of infirmity must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I declare all sickness gone from you in Jesus' name. Be healed. I speak, I speak all sickness gone from your family, healing in your family in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Receive peace. Receive peace now. No more worries. No more worries. Peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is touching you right now and bringing freedom. Hallelujah. You can come here a little closer. Thank you, Jesus. Did you want to renounce anything? I was standing in the gap for my unsaved husband, for my children. Yes. Now it's um, like I have a little problem with overeating sometimes. <laughs> so I, I really am um, inflammation. Amen. I detach you from that now. I break every generational curse. And I declare every spirit that of addiction, everything attached, must go now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be free completely in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Complete freedom now. Thank you, Lord. I speak this anointing to co to your husband. I declare his eyes to open up. I call him into the kingdom. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Receive peace, abundant life. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You were the child, hon. Thank you, Lord. God is bringing freedom to you and your family now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Did you want to renounce anything, hon? Um, I want to renounce any generational curses of addiction, of um, being a single parent. Um, that runs a lot in my family. Um, I just want to renounce any, any um, I'm afraid of anger and rage. Um, just, I, I can't even think of anything right, but. I'm so afraid of my family. Man, God is freeing you now, hon. Thank you, Lord. I break every generational curse and I detach you from all of this now. I declare every spirit attached, every spirit of rage, anger, every spirit of divorce. I declare all must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I declare all of the lack to be removed from your life now. I declare doors to open up for provision, abundant life in your finances. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I speak abundance of peace in both of your lives now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you for every miracle you have done, God. Thank you for every miracle you are doing. Thank you, Lord. I declare right now healing over every person. I declare freedom over every person. I declare every curse broken, every generational curse broken. 
I declare every demonic soul type broken. I declare every spirit of addiction, anxiety, depression, infirmities to go from every person in Jesus' name. I declare every spirit attacking in the night to go, every spirit of religion to go in Jesus' name, every spirit that is holding you back, that is keeping you from moving forward, but is keeping you stuck. I break it now. I declare it to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I declare every demonic stronghold of religion that is holding you back, pulling you into, trying to keep you in old wineskin, keeping your eyes shut. I speak it to be broken off your life now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I speak all sicknesses must go in Jesus' name. All pain must go in Jesus' name. And right now, God is releasing this anointing upon every person here. He's releasing impartation of anointing now. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands to receive this anointing now. Thank you, Jesus. I release this anointing upon every person here now in Jesus' name. May this power of God flow through you and touch many people with God's power. As you pray for people, let miracles happen. As you pray for the sick, as you lay hands on the sick, as you declare sicknesses to go, may they be healed in Jesus' name. I declare this authority of Christ in you now that demons would see it and would obey you in Jesus' name. I declare that many people would be set free from all sorts of demonic bondage through you as you walk in your authority, as you pray for people, as you cast out these demons in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I declare this power of God to move through your tongue, that it would be like fire on your tongue, and that you would speak God's rhema word, you would speak the prophetic word, let the prophetic anointing come in Jesus' name. And may eyes open up to God's love and his power as you speak, as you testify, as you speak simply. Let God's power be through your words, be in your words and touch people in Jesus' name. I declare the spirit of religion to be broken off people through you. I declare the spirit of religion is going down. It's going to be going down through this army that is here. No longer will the spirit of religion reign. It's being destroyed now. Jesus and his kingdom will reign. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I declare that you would spread this anointing, this revival everywhere you go, that revival would truly break out everywhere you go, in your churches, in your ministries, in your workplaces, in your families, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I declare that no scheme of the devil can stop you in your calling. And as you walk in this anointing and as you make the devil mad, no matter what kind of attacks come your way, you will be victorious, I declare in Jesus' name. Any kind of persecution that comes your way, you will have victory and you shall go glory to glory. Let boldness arise in you. I speak the fire of God to come in you, to fill you, to overflowing. Let your life be ablaze for Jesus. May you be on fire every day for Jesus. May you roar like a lion every day. May you be bold and fearless and courageous in the Lord. In Jesus' name, let the devil fear you. Let him lose every day. Every day you will have victory, I declare. And I declare every scheme of the devil to try to stop you from your calling, from walking in this anointing, I break it off your life in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Receive this anointing in your life now. Receive this anointing. Let it touch every part of your life. I declare abundant life in every area. I declare abundant peace, abundant joy in every area in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your lives will not be the same from today. You are anointed. Say, I am anointed. I carry authority in Christ over the devil. The devil is under my feet. I will have victory in Christ every day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I know this anointing is real. I know this impartation is real. I know it is in you. For every one of you that has surrendered, it is in you now. Now, every one of you, you have different callings. God has different plans, different callings for every single one of you. For me, it was nine months of ministering after receiving the first impartation that I began to even see any manifestation of God's power. And then it was four and a half years later before the first demon manifested. But that had to do with my specific calling. That was a big part of God's refining fire for my life. Uh, it's going to look different for all of you. Some of you, you will, you will start to see demons manifest like right after today. Because you really have received impartation of anointing. But for, for some of you... God may have it hidden, but it's in you. It's there. But, but, but he may be stretching your faith, testing you through this, as he did for me. What's important is to be spiritual. Renew your mind. I have received. For some of you that aren't surrendered, you haven't received the anointing of impartation yet. Surrender. And this anointing will then pour in your life. Amen? Or, or some of you, God has given you a measure, but he needs more surrender from you. And then more of this anointing will pour in your life. But you have received today. You have authority over the devil today. Walk in this authority. Take your authority in Christ seriously. And you will see victory in your own personal life like never before. And you will see victory in your ministries, in your church, in your dominion. In your dominion. Every day. Hallelujah. It's time for victory, body of Christ. Victory, hallelujah. You are champions, you are winners. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give God a huge praise for all he has done today. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord, for all that you have done, for all the miracles you've done today, Jesus, for your anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for your anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to give the mic now back to Pastor Darren. Apostle Catherine, thank you so much for being a part of these last two days, for the impartation that you've left here in our hearts, in this house, and also in this region. We so honor the anointing on your life. We celebrate what Jesus is doing, and we can't wait to see what he does, knowing this is just the beginning. There's, there's no telling what he has in store for you. Uh, know this, you have family here in Seattle. We are cheering you on alongside of the great cloud of witnesses. And so let's just celebrate Jesus and what he's doing through the ministry of Apostle Catherine. Thanks again. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hasn't this been incredible? How do you believe that you've received an impartation? How do you feel like you've leveled up in your authority and in your understanding and the operation of the dynamics of deliverance? Isn't that wonderful? You know, in the Catholic Church, one of the things that they say is, do not practice exorcism at home. That exorcism is reserved only for priests. 
and for priesthood. But how you know that we've been given the doctrine of the priesthood of believers? Therefore, we, we say, please go and practice this at home, at work. Wherever you go, release the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Have an amazing lunch. We hope to see you back at 2 p.m. We'll have more worship with the amazing Revival City worship team even at 2 p.m. God bless you.